Hello, my name is Caden Stevens, Technical Marketing Engineer for Cisco's Software Defined Access Solution Team. Today, this is the third part in a four part series of building SDA from scratch and will continue on with device provisioning. I did a brief overview of what SD Access is in the first video in this series. So if you feel like you need to go watch that, please feel free to do so. If you want to get more familiar with SDA, go and check out more videos on our channel, or you can check out the latest Cisco DNA Center data sheet. But if you feel like you're all good, let's get started. All right, we're ready to start putting together our first SDA fabric. Let's go ahead and start provisioning our devices. We'll head over to provision and then inventory. And what's nice is that when we provision devices to a site, it takes care of the assignation piece as well as assigning and provisioning devices are separate. Be aware though, that when you assign devices to a site, that Cisco DNA Center will push site specific device configurations, whether that device is going to be involved in a fabric or not. To start provisioning our devices, we'll head to a device or multiple devices of the same type. I say this because if you go to multi-select your devices and pick two or more devices of different types, you will not be able to provision these devices to their respective sites. So I'll go ahead and start with these ASR 1Ks that I have. And I'll go to Actions, Provision, and then Provision Device. I'll choose the site here. I want to provision these two ASRs to Building 4. And I'll click Save. And I'll click Apply to All. I'll hit Next. Next again. Next. All right, so here we are at our summary page and we can verify the tasks that we're about to deploy. So we can scroll through this, make sure everything's good. And after we've made sure we're all good, we can go ahead and hit deploy. And then I'm gonna choose to deploy now. So I'll click apply. And I'm going to fast forward through this process, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish provisioning our devices to their respective sites. All right, I'm back. I'll go ahead and show you my provision devices. I'll change the focus here to provision. And then I'll sort by provisioning status. And we'll see that I have seven different devices that I've provisioned and were successful. Okay, now it's time to start sculpting our first fabric. So let's go ahead and go ahead over to provision and then under SD access, we'll head over to fabric sites. And we'll click on create fabric sites and fabric zones. Let's do it. And this will go ahead and start the workflow of creating our fabric sites. So my first fabric site, I'll set it as building four and press next. Press next again. And I'll go ahead and give it a close authentication template. And press next. We'll continue on and press next. And here's our summary page of everything that we just put together. We'll hit deploy. And we'll see that our fabric site creation has completed. And let's go ahead and create another fabric site here. And I'll create two more fabric sites for my other two sites. I'll go ahead and speed through this process since we already saw it before. All right, so that was the last fabric site that I needed to create and navigate to the next step in our process, which is going to be provisioning some transits and peer networks. I'll go ahead and click on transits. The workflows that are located here include the IP based transit, SD access transit and SD WAN transit as well. We'll go ahead and click create transit. And we'll give our first transit a name. I'll just simply call it SDA transit. And I will be selecting list pub sub for this transit. In this section on transit control plane nodes, I had to go back and pause the video and provision one of our ISR 4Ks 
to the building foresight in order to use it here functionally as a transit control plane node. Now we'll select building four as our transit control plane node site. And then for the transit control plane node, we'll select our ISR. I'll hit save. And then we do want to apply this now. All right, so there's our first transit. Let's go ahead and create another one and we'll hit create transit. For this one, I'll name it IP transit. And for the transit type, I'll select IP based. For the routing protocol, we'll use BGP. And for the ASN number, I'm actually going to be using 65003. We'll hit save. And nice, our two transits have successfully been created. So now that that's done, we'll jump into virtual networks or VNs for short. And SD access does support macro segmentation using virtual networks in the fabric. There are both layer three and layer two VNs. Typically VNs are associated with their respective IP pools, allowing communication through the overlay network. So for this virtual network process, we're actually going to toggle on this preview new SD access button and get a nice and more sleeker UI to work through under layer three virtual networks here. We'll go ahead and click this number. And we see all the VNs that we have already. It is important to note that on this screen, the only two VNs that are stocked to DNA center is default VN and infra VN. We'll go ahead and get started with infra VN and add it to our first site. So I'll scroll all the way to the right here. Hover and then click add to fabric site. I'll go ahead and get started with building four and press select. Awesome. So now we see here that under associated fabric sites, it has successfully associated the infra VN with our building four site. So I'll go ahead and add our other two sites while we're at it. So after we've done that, I'll go ahead and create two more VNs that we're going to be using. So I'll hit create layer three virtual network. Hit let's do it. And I'll give our first VN a name of campus VN. And I'll press next. And for the fabric sites that I want associated, I'm going to select all three sites. So site one, site two, and building four. Once I'm done with that, I can hit next. Leave everything as default. View our summary page. Next again. And then we're going to hit create on the top left hand corner. And after we created the VN, we can deploy it. Once that's been deployed, we can go to view all virtual networks. And here we see the campus VN that we just created and the three different fabric sites is associated to. I'm going to go ahead and add one more virtual network, but I'm going to speed through this process this time as we just saw the workflow and now we're familiar with it. All right, so we'll once more head back to view all virtual networks. And on this page, we can see the three virtual networks that we were dealing with BMS, campus and infra. They're all associated with our three different fabric sites that we have created. Now it's time to assign some fabric roles. So we'll head over to fabric sites. All right, so keep in mind that we do have this preview new SD access button still toggled on. So that's why the screen looks different than when we visited it before. I'm going to leave it on, but you're welcome to turn it off. But I'm going to continue with it on because the UI is a lot more user friendly. So I'm going to go ahead and select the number above fabric sites. All right here. So I'll select site number two. And I see that I have my 9300 that I'm going to enable as a fabric in a box. So it's going to have border control plane and edge node all enabled. I'll enable layer three handoff, add two of my transit sites, and then I'll add an external interface for my IP transit. 
And then after I'm done with that, I will enable layer three handoff for all three of my virtual networks and give them each a VLAN ID number. And I'll go ahead and click save. And then let's select an IP pool. Add. And then we'll move on to the control point node. And I'll select list pub sub. Add. And finally, enable it as an edge node and click add. I started off with this fabric in a box so you can see the configuration that goes into enabling a device as a border, control plane, or an edge node. Now that you've seen it, I'm going to speed through the rest of my fabric sites and assign the devices that are associated with them to their respective roles and apply the transits there as well. Make sure you hit deploy in the bottom right hand corner after you have assigned your roles. If you don't hit deploy and then apply afterwards, your changes will not be saved. So here's a handy tip that I wanted to leave in this video that helps me out. If you don't like how your devices are positioned, when you come over to a fabric site view, you can rearrange your devices by dragging them and dropping them to wherever you want them. And then you can go to custom focus, save your custom focus, give it a name. And then now every time afterwards you come back here, it'll look like how you configured it yourself. We'll head over back to fabric sites. And after we have completed adding all of our roles and deploying our changes, you should verify that your virtual network configurations made it over to your border nodes in your fabric. I will check that real quick on one of my borders, then continue on to verify list pub sub configuration as well. And I'll start it off on one of my ASRs. I'll do a show run pipe section. 3007 and 3007 is one of the VLAN IDs I configured in my border configuration. And after I've checked that, I'll check out 3008 and 3009 as well, and we'll verify everything made it over to our border. Okay. The next command I'll run here is show VRF. And after running this command, we could take a look at the two different instance IDs that are associated with my virtual networks. Next, I'll do a show Lisp instance ID 4104 IPv4 publisher. And this is for checking the Lisp publishers on the border device. Next, we'll do a show Lisp instance ID 4104 IPv4 publication followed by our default route. And this is to check the default route pointing to both the borders. Next, we'll do a show Lisp VRF default session and we'll point it to the control plane IP address. And this is to check the Lisp session status of the control plane node. All right, a couple more commands here. We'll do a show Lisp service IPv4. And this one is exactly what it sounds like. We'll be checking the IPv4 Lisp service on the border device. Let's do a show Lisp session to check the Lisp session status on the control plane node with the fabric devices. 
we'll see that all the states are up, which is a good thing. And we'll go into our next and final command here. All right, lastly, we'll do a show list instance ID 4104 IPv4 subscriber. And this is to check the list subscribers on a specific instance ID. All right, so that completes the verification process and you should now continue the verification process to all the other fabric sites that you have created. But for time purposes, I won't verify everything else. Let's head back over to DNA Center. All right, last process in this video, we'll head over to provision, SD access, and then virtual networks. And we wanna check out our gateways and custom VLANs in our fabric. I will click to view our layer three virtual networks. And we'll hover over our campus virtual network and hit create any cast gateways. There are three places our virtual network is associated with. We will select an IP pool that will be associated with this AnyCast gateway. For the building for virtual network, we will give the VLAN name of demo wired, VLAN ID of 10, and set the traffic type to data. We'll continue on to do the exact same thing for the other two sites. We'll get a nice summary page of everything we've done. Hit next. And then create our AnyCast gateways. After those were successfully created, I'm going to continue on and do the same thing for my BMS virtual network. All right, everything was successful. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is go on to verify these NCAS gateways. I will head over to our Fabric Edge device that is located in our campus fabric and run a show VRF command to check the configured VLANs on the Fabric Edge node. We can also do a show run interface VLAN 10 to check the SVI configuration on the fabric edge node as well. Let's also quickly perform some verification on our fabric in a box device located in our branch fabric. I'll run the same show VRF command here and also a show run interface VLAN 30 command. All right, and that completes our verification process. All right, that wraps up the basics of the provisioning process. Thank you for checking out part three of our four part series of building SDA from scratch. Please remember to go check out more videos on this channel and like, comment, and subscribe. Take care.